Shanghai. Other indicators suggesting changing habits in the world's largest car market. June, China car sales dropped for the first time in more than two years. Automakers sold 1.4 million units during the month. That's a 3% drop. Analysts say it's due to the slowing economy and the recent stock market drop. Major brands have also recorded sluggish sales as well. Ford says its June sales dropped 3% from the same period last year. GM saw its sales being flat. And Volkswagen posted its first Chinese delivery decline in 10 years during the six months uh, into June. Now, for more insights into China's car market, we're joined by Lauren Fix, auto industry expert with the Car Coach. Um, Lauren, good to see you. This, uh, this decline you. in car sales, do we worry or not? Well, it is a worry. I mean, you're talking about, you know, the economy is definitely potentially lined up for a recession based on everybody's concern for spending money. You've got your stock market decline. And then, of course, you've got the congestion. And when there's a price cut from companies such as Volkswagen, and VW usually doesn't because VW and GM have been selling cars quite regularly in China. With the drop in sales and the incentives, that's obviously a sign that there's maybe a loss in overall sales. And, of course, the growth numbers that we're projecting are substantially less than we originally thought. The, um, I mean, a lot of people are saying, look, I mean, you had these huge numbers in terms of trying to project growth, and it, they've had it for the past years and years and years. Mm -hmm. What's the big deal? So they pull back a little bit. I mean, what's causing all this? Well, a big chunk of it has to do with, uh, with uh, obviously, your stock market. Consumers are a little bit concerned about purchasing a car, the cost of a car, being able to access licensing. And, of course, you discussed that just earlier in the segment. But then, in addition, you know, if you can do a car share situation, something that you're seeing in other big cities here, for example, in the U.S., that may be something that could really put an impact on auto sales as a whole because your used car market is virtually zero. We've seen the uh, luxury market there, uh, Audi, Rolls Royce uh, as well. They see their sales down as well. So it's a pretty much uh, across the board. What are the options for, uh, for car makers from here? Well, the only thing they can do is either offer incentives like we have done here in the U.S. The problem is then you're selling more cars. But if there's no way to get a license plate or a registration, because it's a different situation in China than we have here in, in North America, that could be another impact. If you own a car and you can't use it, it doesn't make any sense. So I think that you're going to see either a cutback in production, which then, of course, could affect jobs and that could eventually, eventually lead to a recession. So we don't want to promote the recession, obviously. We have to be very careful in the amount of vehicles that we produce, making sure that they're all sold as close to asking price as possible. Uh, China has long uh, talked about uh, taking their domestic brands and making them uh, more international. In other words, they're going mm -hmm. to uh, promote sort of the domestic brands at home. Uh, how's that coming along, and uh, what's the impact to the foreign brands? Well, I, I think that the more that China promotes their internal brands or their domestic brands, that will actually help their economy because you're still going to be offering jobs. And it's good to have vehicles available. People will feel more likely to purchase a brand that's produced in their country, a little bit of brand loyalty for their own nation. Uh, the same thing happens here in the U.S. It tends to be around areas where the cars are built. Ford, GM, and Chrysler and other brands that are built here in the U.S. tend to create that loyalty, and that will also help. But again, your biggest issue right now is licenses. They're being auctioned off without the ability to drive the car. And, of course, the overall cost. And then there's the other factor, you know, with the potential of being watched over that you're spending a lot of money on a car could raise a red flag that the government's starting to find people that are going after, going after people who are spending a lot of money on cars and asking where that money is coming from. So there's a lot of concerns that all the people that are living in China are thinking about. And, of course, the big one's going to be the congestion and the traffic. And that's going to be difficult because you don't have highways like we do here. You've got a lot of city traffic. And if you can't find a place to park and you can't get a license, it's going to be difficult to purchase a vehicle. Uh, switching gears, uh, Tesla. Uh, yes. The headlines from there are in China have not been all that uh, hot, as much as I guess people expected. I'm just curious, the future of uh, electric cars. Well, you know, that's a really good question. Um, electric cars, from my perspective, is great when you're talking about inner cities that offer a place to plug in. But electricity is not free. And in a city that's congested, such as New York City or someplace in China like Beijing, if you have no place to plug in, you can't draw a line from your building, especially if you live in an apartment building, there's, that presents a problem for electric vehicles. And Tesla thought that he'd have huge sales. He was ready to put a lot of money into that. But even sales here have been impacted in some ways because 
soon we're going to lose our incentives from the federal government and people that are making over a certain dollar amount, such as over $100,000 in California, are going to lose that incentive. And that will put a huge impact on Tesla, not just in China, but here. If they can't produce the cars that consumers want, then that's one problem. And the other thing is I think it's very short-sighted because down the road, when those batteries are completely used up, they've completely been used for every possible place, we have nothing to do with those batteries. So until someone develops a way to break down every component that's in these batteries and reuse them, we can't put them on the, in the ocean, we can't put them in the land, we can't send them to the moon. We have to come up with some solution. And until that time, there's going to be a repercussion for all these electric vehicles down the road. Yeah, that's a real, that's a real good point. Uh, China's car sales, uh, they were expecting seven. Uh, they're now at three. I guess the only good news is maybe there'll be some, uh, some better deals on cars. Lauren Fix, uh, hey. good to see you. Thank you for joining good us uh, on this uh, good topic. Uh, now let's take a look at some of the other headlines coming out of China.